was a pretty hard day, which was, when I say today, I mean the past 24 hours or so has been really difficult. I don't know if you can tell, but I've been crying for hours today and yesterday and still having a lot of good moments and moments of hope, but definitely feeling, I don't even know where to start. Um, so I left Texas or Northern Texas yesterday morning and I started driving around like 8 a.m. I woke up at six or something like that. And by noon or one, I started to feel really hot and really stressed out. And it was probably just from driving nonstop and not getting enough exercise or I don't know. As I say that, I need to stretch actually. But I started feeling really off and two of my best friends called me, which was amazing because I was able to just talk with them and work through some feelings and just talk not feel alone but then I went to this gas station to fill um just to fill up because I'm like guzzling gas pulling this trailer so I wanted to get gas and then I nicked the little side of my trailer and so that kind of shook me up I became upset um but I figured it was just mainly cosmetic and it's fine so I moved on got back on the highway and then I started seeing where the miles per gallon speedometer is it's telling you like how much gas you're using or how fuel efficient you're being there was this little blinking red light that looked like heat and so I called my dad he said it was my saying that my car was overheating I started freaking out then it went from flickering to just full-on the light was shining so I figured like I was definitely my car was definitely overheating at that point I thought it was weird because I had just stopped for gas and I had noticed just because my AC had started not really working either. So I was just kind of burning up and freaking out and all that was happening at once. So thank God there was a rest stop. I pulled over. I had just signed up for AAA because one of my friends had suggested I do that and I did it. They were no help. They couldn't even find my... First they put me in touch with the Boston office. Then I said I was in Texas. She was like, okay, I thought you were in Boston because of your phone number. Then they were like, we're going to put you in touch with um, your home office, which is Colorado. So they did that, or they tried to put me through to Texas. They couldn't find my number that I had signed up with for some reason, Tried to transfer me back to Colorado. I couldn't get anyone on the phone. It had already been an hour and it was a Saturday and I was so worried if I needed to be towed or if I needed something fixed in my car, like time was running out. I only had a few hours to deal with this before all of the mechanics that even are open on the weekends which are few and far between here in texas um were eventually closed so i just hung up on AAA, and i also realized they're not really doing much for me except for giving me a tow for three miles for free and then i have to pay for it after that so i think i'm going to cancel AAA. um i don't think it's actually that good i've gotten confirmation on that now especially because i heard that you could just call towing with your car insurance which i realized i have done before so I finally like calmed down enough. I got a mechanic on the phone. I added some water to my car. I was wondering if maybe I could just drive a few miles to the local mechanic. I tried it and then it started doing the button over again and overheating. And I just didn't know if that meant my car was about to explode or what was gonna happen to me. So I pulled over again at this random gas station in the middle of nowhere. And then two nice mechanic men locals came and looked at my car and for like 30 minutes to an hour they were diagnosing things and mainly just one of them was looking at everything and said that I had um need to replace the coolant or I can't remember it's the the place where you have like the cold they said there was a leak in the front and that I needed like this belt um replace that kind of correlates with the I'm blanking out on the names, but anyway, it was supposedly this emergency situation where I could maybe keep trying to drive and add water or coolant to the, um, that area of the car, or I could, um, just wait like four or five days in this random town in Texas, which is just not financially or time or space viable for me right now. And so I was really freaking out. 
Um, the part that they supposedly needed to fix it wasn't until Monday or Tuesday. I don't really have any extra money right now. I'm already like super tight as it is with everything. And so yeah, for like three or four or five hours yesterday, I was just freaking out, brought it to the other mechanic. He said there actually isn't anything broken. So I was really confused why, I don't know. The whole thing was so stressful and so confusing. Finally, I got back on the road and I kept going down to Dallas. I was like, I just need to move my body and take a shower. I hadn't showered in like three days and um, and I haven't really worked out. And I know that that's part of the reason that I'm feeling so anxious. So I ended up going and joining Planet Fitness, which I hate that place aesthetically. It's so ugly and Oh, I don't know, the purple and black is just so weird, but supposedly there's the most, it's like the biggest chain in the US, and normally I don't love supporting chains unless they're nicer feeling, but it's super cheap. They have like 2,000 2, locations in the US, so if I am gonna be starting to travel more and maybe go into full-time on the road, I feel like it's so smart to have that. So I was able to get a little workout there at like 9 p.m. in Fort Worth, took a shower, like brought in my beautiful shampoo and conditioner and just like felt so much better after that. And then I was just planning on regrouping then and maybe getting a hotel, but really trying not to do that because honestly, I don't really like hotel beds unless it's like a five-star hotel. Beds are always like washed with really inorganic laundry detergent and smell weird. And I'm just like, honestly, the bed I have in my trailer now is like so comfortable, beautiful, organic cotton sheets. And on top of that, just like gathering my, finding a hotel takes time. It's not just money. It's like time to find a hotel or motel, time to drive there, checking in. I have to gather like all my sleeping materials and clothes and everything to walk up. And I just, I'm really trying to lean into sleeping on the road and like practicing with what that feels like in different spaces. So I did sleep in a Walmart parking lot for the first time, which was, insane. Um, at first I pulled into a Home Depot because I thought it was legal to go there based on one of my travel apps. And then I was reading signs that they would tow you. So then I did more research and they said, you can sleep at Home Depot and like stores like that, but it depends on the region. And I really, because I didn't really see like anybody else sleeping in their cars there, I just really like didn't want to be woken up in the middle of the night with a knock from a police or anything so I decided to just be safe rather than sorry and um, move on. I ended up just going to a Walmart because I was so tired and even there they had the tow away signs so all the Walmart employees were sitting outside after their shift because they had just closed and they were all talking with one another and I asked them like hey can I park there? They said probably <laughs> so I was like okay that I, I feel like I've heard you can definitely park at all Walmart so I slept in my trailer at a Walmart for the first time and it was a pretty insane experience for me, especially because I've been pretty against Walmarts my whole life. I never really went to them or heard of them when I was young, never went to one until I was like 20 something. And I watched a documentary about them in marketing class in high school and I just remember how basically toxic they are for our world and they're one of those corporations that in so many ways they are ruining our planet their the documentary went into how they were taking over towns in south america and like really displacing native people and communities and groups and of course probably saying oh well it's good we're bringing them resources but as we know everything at a walmart especially is filled with toxic chemicals so Anyway, I try not to get too close to those places, but I did shop there before leaving on for my trip because of the location I live in. I got a few cheap hooks there and I tried to just pray over the situation. And last night sleeping there, again, it was really just like trying to practice gratitude for a safe place to sleep. And even though it was a little bit loud at first and like big truck sounds in the beginning of the night, like I think because I was so tired and I have earplugs, I was able to just kind of like Put a pillow and earplugs over my head and sleep in my super comfy bed and just passed out for the night so that was amazing and that was like a big kind of experience for me i also before i got to the home depot or walmart i went by the a lowe's loves um gas station where you could park but the one just south of fort worth was like packed with trucks the trucks were so loud i guess these trucks sleep with their motors on i'm not really sure but there was also just like no space to park there 
So that's why I continued on to check out the Home Depot and the Walmart. And I'm really proud of myself. I just like got through that. It's obviously not ideal, but in a situation like this where I'm like trying to get from point A to point B in a finite amount of time, I feel like it's just a good skill to have, like knowing how to park in public spaces like that just for a quick overnight nap, basically. Um, so I'm really happy about that overall. I'm proud of myself and yeah, it's just been an emotional day because I woke up there. Like, of course, I prefer waking up in nature at campsites, but with the way my car has been acting and pulling this trailer, it's like, I've just been learning so much the past 24 hours. I've been watching so many YouTube videos on like trucks and vans and tow capacity. And like this whole experience has just made me realize like, as much as I love my Subaru, it's just not the right vehicle for me for what I need in my life and what I want to do. And um, as hard as this all is, it's been such a good learning experience. And it's made me once again realize how much I really want to live on the road and live out of a van and a trailer and kind of do that lifestyle for a while. And not necessarily moving every day, like staying somewhere for two weeks, staying at a friend's place for a few months, staying on friends, you know, like I would still perhaps rent land or have a home base somewhere, but I just don't ever want to pay rent again. And I also don't feel like I'm in a position to buy land at this exact moment. So I feel like living out of a van and a trailer, maybe having a few storage units for my art just makes the most sense right now. So those are some of my epiphanies. Um, I just learned how to check my tire pressure again today, which I can't believe I didn't know, but like all of these things, I just wanna learn more about cars and trucks and I wanna feel safe on the road. And yeah, I need to stretch so badly. So I'm gonna do one more little stretch and then get back to organizing my car, refill it with more of this coolant fluid and continue on my way. I'm about an hour and a half, two hours from Houston. So almost at my friend's house and it will be such a moment of respite and peace and relaxation once I get there. This is a little love tuner. So between this and my tuning fork, I'm stabilizing. <laughs> <laughs> 